While pathologists are trained to identify and surgically remove organs, bones, and other tissues, not even the best of them can remove a mind and put it in a bottle of formaldehyde. They can't because the mind is not a thing. The mind is the function of the brain. The mind is to the brain what movement is to muscles. The mind is what the brain does. Nobody knows exactly how the mind works. It is incredibly complex. It may be that we are incapable of fully knowing what the mind is. We can, however, make models of the mind. Models are tools used in finance, the sciences, architecture, in any situation where there is a need to simplify otherwise dizzyingly complex concepts to understand them. Sometimes the models are real, three-dimensional representations only on a smaller scale. Sometimes they are constructions made solely of numbers. Sometimes there are ways of describing a thing that are metaphorical or simplified, but not so much that they produce erroneous results or lead us into misunderstanding. Our model, for our purposes, is a simplified description, a metaphor, of how the mind appears to function. There are many models we could choose from. No one model is any better than any other, so long as it helps us to understand how our minds appear to be organized, and ideally give us options for improving how our minds build and influence the experience of our lives. If you wish to make a change in your life, the mind is where you start. No model of the mind is perfect. It's fair to switch models if the model you're using doesn't help your understanding. We're just looking for what works at this point, anything that helps us understand. We should never forget that models are just models and not mistake the model for the mind itself. Here's the model we'll use. I'd like you to imagine a smartphone, much like the smartphone you might carry with you every day. Most everyone has one, or at least has a good idea of what they're like. You and your cell phone are both smart, although smart in different ways. So the metaphor is fitting. Picture the screen of your imaginary smartphone with rows and columns of colorful app icons. These icons represent aspects of your unconscious mind. They represent your memories, your education, your emotions, your goals, your habits, your hobbies, your skills, your personal charisma, your spiritual self, your intellectual self, your social self, and so on, etc., representing the catalog of all the aspects of who you are. Furthermore, if you were to swipe to the next screen, you'd find an entirely separate section representing your unconscious collective, which I call the biological mind. There are as many, if not more, icons devoted to your biological mind as there are to your unconscious mind. The biological mind is that part of your mind that manages all your bodily functions so that you don't consciously have to think to manage and maintain them. Your circulatory system, your respiratory system, your skeletal system, 
your muscular system, your integumentary system, that is skin, hair, fingernails, your digestive system, your nervous system, and so on. Together, I think of the unconscious and biological minds as the unconscious collective. Anchored on the bottom bar across both screens is an app that represents your conscious mind. It's only a single app out of thousands and thousands of others in the mind, but it has several extremely important functions. First of all, it's that part of you that makes you self-aware. Without it, we just wouldn't be us. It's the part of you that is the voice in your head when you think your thoughts. In our model of the mind, the conscious mind plays another vital role in that it acts as a gatekeeper to the unconscious collective. Think of it as a traffic light. That is, it blocks suggestions that it deems suspicious, unbelievable, or counter to our best interests. It attempts to prevent wrongful suggestions from getting into your unconscious collective, where they are accepted without skepticism, where they influence your behavior in ways that potentially could be either beneficial or harmful. Just a side note. In our model, the conscious mind doesn't have direct access to the biological mind. Any suggestions aimed at the management of your automatic bodily functions have to go through the unconscious mind if they can reach it at all. This is why we can't consciously control how we grow, how we heal, how fast and how hard we beat our hearts, how we digest our food. Which actually is a good thing because while the processing power of your unconscious collective is nearly limitless, your conscious mind, the voice in your head, is much more limited. We couldn't consciously juggle all those functions. In conclusion, we only have one mind. Describing it as a smartphone is a way of helping us understand how it appears to function. It's a metaphor a story to tell ourselves which is less complex than the reality of our minds to give us a way to begin to make improvements should they be needed. Be smart. Next installment, quirks of the conscious mind and how they may be used for or against you.